So today I'm talking about Ferguson versus Gaethje UFC 249. And how did Ferguson take so many freaking headshots? Oh, what you say? So today I'm going to react to the Ferguson versus Gaethje 249 fight that took place on May 9th of 2020. In particular, I'm going to talk about the final fight on the card, the one that everyone had been waiting for, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. This was an anxiously awaited bout that came into being after the previously scheduled Ferguson versus Khabib bout fell through as a result of travel and social distancing restrictions mandated because of coronavirus. Can I say that? Ooh. From the viewpoint of the MMA fan, this fight did not disappoint. What is he barking at? 12 seconds later. From the viewpoint of the MMA fan, man, this fight did not disappoint. However, this fight was not without controversy. Stay tuned to find out exactly what I'm talking about. Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. Welcome to my channel, your number one stop for information on orthopedics and sports medicine that's easy to understand for everybody. And I do mean everybody, including Charles, AKA Wolfie. Here. Looks good to me. That being said, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get on with the freaking topic. Now, if you don't know anything about MMA, let me give you a quick refresher on these two fighters. Tony Ferguson is the number one contender in the lightweight division with a record of 26 wins and three losses. Correction four losses as of last night. He has been on a win streak of 12 fights that has extended over the last eight years. He has run through every single opponent that he has faced during that time, finishing most of them by either submission or by knockout. He has left the decision to the judges on only three occasions during the last eight years. Three. El Kukui, as he is nicknamed, is known for his endless stamina and an impressive skill set that extends across all disciplines of MMA, including striking, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. He is commonly referred to as the boogeyman because he is relentless and can keep coming at a fighter all fight long with a furious pace. With freakish cardio and endless stamina, he is unlikely to get tired and his durability, meaning his ability to take a punch, is legendary. More on that later. By the way, if you want to know more about my life as an orthopedic surgeon, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Stable Knees, and I'm also on TikTok as Dr. Dot Chris Rainer. But let's get on to the next fighter. Justin Gaethje, on the other hand, is a relative newcomer in the UFC to Tony Ferguson. He is the number four contender in the lightweight division with a record of 21 wins and two losses. Uh, scratch that. 22 wins and two losses as of 1 a.m. this morning. He has been on his own respective win streak of three fights that extends back to August of 2018, before which he suffered two consecutive losses. He is known for his heavy hands with 19 knockouts credited to his name and only two of his fights going to a decision. Two, that's it. With a strong wrestling background, he has also finished a fight by submission. Like Tony, Justin is known for his fight pace and his Terminator-like pressure that just keeps on coming. If he doesn't knock out his opponents outright, he wears them down with his relentless pressure first and then he knocks them out anyway. He has been the recipient of many fight night bonus checks as a result of fireworks that ensue whenever he is fighting. By the way, did I mention that I want to teach everybody about orthopedics and sports medicine? Help me to do that by sharing this video with anyone who you think will be interested in this topic. Stick around to the end of the video for my favorite comments from the last video. Moving on now, UFC 249 had these two fighting machines pitted against each other for the interim lightweight belt. The winner of this fight would likely be the next opponent for Khabib Nurmagomedov. This fight was destined to be a barn burner and it did not disappoint. The fight lasted four and a half rounds before it was stopped by the referee. During that time, the fight was controlled largely by Gaethje, although he was the Las Vegas odds underdog on the card. Interestingly, the fight almost did not make it to the third round after Ferguson nearly put the lights out for Gaethje right at the bell at the end of the second round. Talk about being saved by the freaking bell. The fight continued into the championship rounds with Justin continuing to dish out punishment to Tony at a measured pace. Despite this abuse, Tony just kept 
coming. He was unable to damage Gaethje to any significant extent, but like the Energizer Bunny, he just kept on going. Tony was struck with a number of blows that would certainly have put the lights out for many other talented fighters. His will to continue was almost superhuman, and it is with this that I have a problem. Don't get me wrong now, I'm an MMA fan and I appreciate a great technical contest between skilled martial artists. But during this fight, I started to become concerned and my doctor brain started considering all of the effects of this fight. During this fight, Ferguson absorbed 143 blows, 100 of which were direct blows to the head before the referee intervened. 100 blows over a period of 24 minutes, a rate of approximately five heavy-handed blows to the head every freaking minute for nearly a half hour straight. And these were not light blows. In between rounds, Gaethje's coaches counseled him to stop trying to take Tony's head off with every freaking punch as up to that point, he had thrown every punch with bad intentions. Just imagine being punched in the head as hard as is humanly possible, five times every minute for the entire duration of a sitcom. Not really a pleasant Saturday evening. So that gets me to wondering, what are the effects of this kind of punishment? A recent University of Toronto study suggested that mixed martial artists suffer traumatic brain injuries in almost a third of professional bouts, far more than the rate of such injuries in hockey, football, or even apparently in boxing, although I find that hard to believe. The study analyzed seven years of UFC scorecards, which detailed when a fight ends with a knockout or a technical knockout, as well as watching videotape of bouts. They concluded the damage done to MMA fighters is likely exacerbated by by the repeated blows to the head delivered after they have already been knocked out cold. Although the fights continue until the bell or until the referee intervenes, it is not uncommon for fighters to receive one or two additional blows while knocked out before the referee is able to step in between fighters. With multiple strike TKOs, which Ferguson suffered, the researchers suggested that MMA fighters suffered an average of 15.9 brain injuries per 100 bouts, or one concussion-like injury in 32% of matches. This is compared with only 2.2 such events per 100 exposures in hockey, and 8.08 .08 per 100 exposures in football. The 30 seconds before the matches were stopped was characterized by the fighter who was losing being on the receiving end of a flurry of multiple strikes to the head, as happened with Ferguson. Half of the knockouts occurred as a result of blows to the lower jaw, or mandible, and knocked out fighters suffered an average of 2.6 head strikes after being knocked out. Fortunately, this did not happen to Tony. However, the sheer number of blows that Tony Ferguson received is concerning. While he is certainly very, and I do mean very durable, that very durability caused him to sustain a high number of blows to the head during this match. There is certainly evidence that such repetitive injuries can result over the long term in structural damage to the brain, which may progress to a condition known as chronic traumatic encephalopathy, otherwise known as boxer's dementia. Hopefully, this diagnosis is not in Tony's future. However, this many repetitive blows to the head or face may result in other injuries such as facial fractures or lacerations, such as that which occurred with Alistair Overeem when he was stopped in a recent heavyweight matchup. In this case, it appears that Ferguson suffered just such an injury. Sources close to Ferguson confirmed that he had suffered a fractured orbital bone during the contest. This is an injury similar to that suffered by Carolina Kowalkiewicz at UFC Fight Night 168. For more on that, you can watch my video on that topic, link in the description. If this information from Ferguson's sources is correct, then he will likely require surgery to stabilize the fracture. What is he barking at? If this information from Ferguson's sources is correct, then he will likely require surgery to stabilize the fracture and this will result in an extended layoff for Ferguson, which ultimately is a good thing. It will take Tony's brain an extended period of time to recover from the effects of the 100 headshots that he received in this contest. The researchers in the study mentioned above suggest that all fighters who have suffered knockouts or TKOs should have mandatory imaging scans following these type of injuries. Having said all of that, 
I am still not sure how Tony Ferguson managed to survive through all of those heavy handed shots from Justin Gaethje during this fight. So now that you've heard the medical side of this, let's see what the people have to say about this. Representing the people, we have the man, the myth, the legend, Wolfie, AKA Charles, AKA light skin, Poppy. Don't swear on my channel. I won't swear. All right. But why am I the people? Cause I'm black and white. Okay. You're so represent I represent all genders and races. You're representing the non-medical people. Okay, perfect. I'm like the average person. But you watched this fight though. Yes. All right. So tell me, what are your thoughts on this fight? I've, uh, I watched Ferguson's last fight. He's a sick fighter. And going into this fight, I was watching it and we're like, Yo, Ferguson's got this in the bag. Ferguson got smoked. No offense. Did he, did he, he would, get smoked? He, did, he, didn't he would get eat smoked. me. He would eat me in a fight. He of didn't course. get smoked. He got smoked. He didn't get smoked. He got controlled. Controlled. Okay, yeah. Like the entire fight, definitely. Like, and I thought he was trolling around because, like, even in the third round, he was like rolling on his back and stuff. And I was like, oh, like, he's still, still in this. But then he would just continuously get snuffed in his head, like, just punched in the face over and over again. But consider the fact now that. For most of Justin's opponents, yes, he ends those people in the first, second round. Yeah, Ferguson should have so been knocked out in round two. If he was anybody else, he would have been knocked out a long time ago. He and he went into the fifth round. Mm -hmm. So, like, just that alone, his ability to withstand that amount of punishment into the fifth round, I think, is Yeah, I don't incredible. know how he does that. I feel like you can train your neck to, like, withstand punches. I did low-key read some articles because I was like intrigued by how this dude got punched so many times and continue. Like I would be knocked out after probably punch three. But you can if you apparently if like you're like you're you know the punch is coming and you're watching all the time. Yeah. Then it hurt like it your body's more ready for it. And so if you're watching it, even though it's like an art to punch people, getting hit is, is an art low-key. So like you just absorbing the punch but knowing it's coming and seeing it's coming, then your face will, and your body and everything, like your body will just go up, like counterbalance it. So it's less effective than if you don't know it's coming. You're off balance. Your neck is completely wobbly, not stiff at all, which you also should be relaxed when you take the punch. But like, if you're not ready for it at all, it's there's a way higher chance it's gonna knock you out. Well, so I feel like he just trains that all the time. To be honest, I don't really know how, how he did it. Um, he just, there were so many blows, so many hits that he took. And he literally just smiled the guy and kept coming. But I, I do think you're right to some extent. I know that if the structures are loose, for example, um, you know, guys who have an open mouth when they get hit, yeah, they're getting knocked out. That's why when guys get hit, they uh, bite down on their mouth guard. And but does it? Is it work like you know when you get a needle, like you're not supposed to tense up? Or it's harder, it hurts when you tense up and you get a needle. Like, that's what I'm but, trying to relate it to. But I think that with a needle, it's different because, so a needle is trying to puncture your tissues, right? And if you tense up, that's you better you make, exactly, you make the tissues harder. And so the needle gonna, is gonna have more of a difficult time going through, mm -hmm. as opposed to if you are relaxed, then everything is soft, the needle passes. Nate Diaz yeah. and Ferguson's jaw are the same. So whatever exercise they're doing to like get hit yep. a thousand times and bleed everywhere and still stand, their trainer needs to come teach you some, some stuff. Wait, are, you, are you planning to get beat up like that? No, I've gotten to a few street fights and I've luckily never been knocked out in a fight. Why, why, do, I, why do I not know about this? I've been to numerous bars and definitely gotten into fist fights. Okay, I, I don't, I don't <laughs> even hear about this. I don't want to hear this. But this, this for another story, this is when I sign up for UFC. I might need this in the future. Wait, I feel like it's, you should just know, you should know how to take a punch. You never well, know. obviously it would be nice to be able, not that anybody should go out and fight, but it would be nice to um, know how to not get knocked out the when, first, yeah, first exactly. time you get punched in your face. Exactly. Whatever they're doing. Like there might be an exercise for your face. You know how when you drop a medicine ball on your abs? And you know you can roll um, rollers on your legs and me and Dustin were talking about this last night and you can like numb some of your nerves. Sure. Because I was asking how how do these UFC fighters kick each other's shins so much? Well, just repetitive. Repetitive they, they, they that and they, and apparently there's a roller that you roll on your nerves to like numb the nerves. Because I feel like one shin kick for me and I'd be done. I would, I'd hurt ow, my own ow. shin. Do these shin kicks hurt, bro? Because they seem to not phase the fighters, bro. Really no, I've seen it. monks go through like a whole process of like mentally Literally mentally training themselves not to feel pain. Yeah, that's so that's crazy. I feel like these fighters are on that level. So this guy took 100 shots to the head. 143 shots, 
100 shots to the head. That is a whack load of punches. Man. Those are hard punches. Those are hard punches. Not not just jabs. Those were hard punches. I don't think he threw a jab once. He pretty, pretty much all hooks. Hooks, 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 hooks. Yeah. When you watch that, do you what do you think is happening to Tony's brain? And do you think that, you know, as a layperson, what do you think is happening to his brain? And do you think that this is something that's going to have any effect on 100%. him? 100%. If you look at like just look at any of like the boxers that have retired, the 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 UFC like MMA gloves are way like smaller. smaller. Yeah. So this is actually connecting with le less of a cushion than boxers, and all all I know is like there's a, a numerous amount of boxers that like their brain is now mushed to a potato. So I do think there's there's I don't know any of the scientific words for like what's happening in the brain. The best way I can describe it is their brain's getting mosh up. <laughs> their brain's getting dummy. Of course. Well, they have a repetitive concussive blows to the head. So yeah. generally, these guys are all getting concussions, subclinical level concussions. Mm -hmm. So they may not outwardly show appearance of, of having some kind of brain injury, but usually these guys are have, like after that many blows, you're going to have something going on. For, for some of the fractures, so orbital fractures, such as what apparently Ferguson suffered in this fight, he's typically going to require an operation for that. And they're going to put a plate and screws. In his face. In his face. So, so does that not hurt hurt to hit? Well, not really because once that heals, he's got like quarter of an inch of tissue in between that plate and the surface mm -hmm. of his skin. So I suppose if you were to hit him hard enough with your bare hand, very minuscule chance that that might actually do something, um, but not not really likely. No, I don't think so. So now that we've heard from the people. The people. Let's take a look at some of my favorite comments from the last video. If you want to be part of the team that helps with the preparation of videos or the selection of topics, you can join some of my patrons like Andreas Upton from Norway by checking out my Patreon page. If you're looking for exercises, or workouts, or you want more information on injury prevention, be sure to check out our sister channel on YouTube at Human 2.0. Thanks for watching, and as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. And of course, Wolfie! Wolfie. Charles, everything. Charles, with a dollar sign. Mm -hmm. New music out now. You know the vibe. Go check it out. Just a flesh wound.